All right, so just a heads up here, this video is going to be rather long, so you might want to grab a drink and some popcorn. But it's all about Linux, Wayland, NVIDIA, Vulkan, and all that good stuff, and some other ramblings. And as well, at the end of this video, Google's LM, this is the Notebook LM learning model, AI, will take over. And they will get into even more information about, you know, this whole thing. So like I said, it's going to be a very, very long one. But I suspect if you are like me and you are a gamer, you kind of don't have a choice right now. If you're into all the latest games and you want to play them all for the most part, and you want to go online and not have any issues whatsoever, really, in all honesty, I know some Linux people are going to disagree with me, but the only option you have currently is Microsoft Windows 11. I have tried numerous, and I do mean numerous, distros over the last few weeks, and I have been both amazed and utterly disappointed, you know, by it. It is interesting, but it can be very frustrating, and if something breaks, well, God help you, right? So, yeah, it's cool and all, but it's not quite there yet when it comes to gaming. If you want to just browse the web and, and do a few other things, video editing maybe, and, uh, you know, whatnot, you can definitely use Linux. No problem whatsoever. And I have thought about switching, but it's not, darn it, it's just not not there yet, right? So let's go through uh, Vulkan and uh, uh, Wayland first and kind of go over what that's about. And then we'll break into um, maybe more about Linux and NVIDIA and what's going on there. All right, so Wayland and Vulkan are both very important technologies in the uh, Linux ecosystem, but they serve different purposes. Wayland is a display server protocol that manages the interaction between applications and the display. So between the applications and the display. It replaces actually the older X11 protocol and offers improved security performance and ease of development. It is responsible for handling such tasks as Windows management and input handling, as opposed to Vulkan, which is a low level graphics API that provides direct access to the GPU's hardware capabilities. So you've got, you know, Wayland with its interaction between the applications and the display and Vulkan at the low level being an API, it has direct access between the GPU's hardware capabilities, right? So now you can kind of see the link between both of these. It is designed to be more efficient and flexible than OpenGL, the previous standard graphics API for Linux. Vulkan allows developers to have greater control over how their applications use the GPU, leading to improved performance and features. So now that we kind of understand what Wayland and Vulkan is relating to Linux, why it is so important that a massive company like NVIDIA, who is now going to be more and more involved, at least that's what it looks like in this, is a very, very good thing. So NVIDIA updates Wayland driver plans and pushes for Vulkan adoption. So NVIDIA is actually focusing here on internal testing to improve the Wayland driver performance. And of course, that would encourage developers to integrate this right within Wayland, kind of drop the old standard, OpenGL, and uh, move into a new direction NVIDIA along with Linux and Wayland and Vulkan all together. Yes, it sounds glorious, doesn't it? So this is all great news in my opinion because when you get major corporations like Valve and NVIDIA encouraging developers to spend more time and resources, I believe that Linux just might turn into the gaming platform. When will this happen? Could be months away, it could be years away, it might never happen. And I guess the big question is, can you as of October 2024 jump into Linux and drop Windows 11? The short answer is yes, you can. So the distro that I would recommend personally if you are moving away from Windows 11 and going into Linux is Fedora. Now I am not sponsored by them. And by the way, if you have any recommendations, 
please leave what you think is the best distro in the comments down below. Now, why do I think this is one of the better ones? Well, it's the closest to Windows 11 and it is very secure. You can do a secure boot. So go to fedoraproject.org, get Fedora, and then you can go to the Atomic Desktops and hit one of them, doesn't matter which one and download and then go ahead if you want a beta select beta downloads and grab one of the beta downloads and create a bootable disk go ahead and then install it now you can install it in a virtual box of sorts if you want to do that like for example hyper-v on windows 11 just to try it out right to see what it's all about before you totally commit to it and that's what I would recommend you do. But what is great about this particular distro and version of the distro is well it's uh it, it just works. It just works. Everything that uh you know I've thrown at it for the most part has has worked. Well, that's going to be it for me, but I am now going to hand it over to Google's Notebook LM. Enjoy. Ever wish your computer graphics and you ran just a tad smoother? No. Well, today we are diving deep, deep into how these graphics actually work. Okay. Specifically, Wayland compositors yeah. and a new API okay. called Vulkan, mm -hmm. which might just be a total game changer. Right. So first off, yeah. what in the world is a Wayland compositor? Yeah, that's a good question. Basically, think of it as like the conductor of an orchestra, right? Okay. But instead of instruments, yeah. it's managing all the visuals that you see on your screen. Right. And Vulcan, that's our potential rock star in this scenario. Gotcha. We're looking at Austin Schaefer's uh, take on this whole thing. Yeah. Why this API, this new API, is creating such a buzz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And his big point, it's not about replacing everything, right? right. It's about like giving developers a secret weapon okay. to make those visuals really pop, to make things so much smoother. Right. And I think it's important to note here, a lot of these compositors, they already use kind of a mix. Yeah, a blend. A blend, yeah, of different graphics APIs. It's very common Yeah. to use a bunch of different things. So adding Wolk into the mix isn't like a complete system overhaul. Yeah, it's not like reinventing the wheel or anything. Mm -hmm. It's more like, you know, you're adding a really nice brush Okay. To your set of painting tools. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yeah. So one of the coolest things I found about Vulkan um, is something called explicit image properties. Okay. And Schaefer calls this like a game changer. Right. Um, how would you describe it? Uh, so explicit image properties, it's uh, it's kind of like, imagine packing a suitcase. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're going on a trip. Mm -hmm. With these older APIs, it's kind of like throwing everything in last minute. Right. And you're just hoping for the best. You get there, and it's a mess. Exactly. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. But Vulcan, it's like packing methodically. Okay. You know exactly where everything is. Yeah, like Marie kondo your suitcase. Exactly. Everything is perfectly organized and in its place. And so how does that impact, like, me, the user? So think about it this way. You're loading up a game. Okay. Right. And instead of staring at that loading screen for what feels like forever. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. Bam. You're in the action in a snap. Wow. That's the power of this. Okay. It lets your graphics card process these images crazy fast. And what does that mean? Smoother gameplay. Okay. A way better visual experience. So it's all about optimization at the end of the day. Exactly. It's just making things tighter. And this organizational structure, it's especially important when you have different hardware from different brands all trying to work together. Right, right. Because I know some people, they're like, oh, I've got to have all AMD or I've got to have all Intel. Yeah. But let's say you have you know, an AMD graphics card and an Intel processor. Vulkan helps them communicate much more efficiently. Yeah. And previously, that was kind of a tech headache. Yeah, for sure. Vulkan just streamlines that whole process. It's interesting you should say that because another thing that makes Vulkan so cool is that it is designed to work across multiple devices right from the start. Yeah, and that's huge for the future. Imagine even smoother, faster communication between graphics cards, even if they're from totally different companies. Right. We could be talking about a whole new level of performance. It's like the Wild West out there. Yeah. Anything's possible. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting about it. So we've got this API. It's organized. It's efficient, ready for anything. But how does that translate to, you know, my everyday experience? Think of it like this. Vulcan is like having a perfectly timed airport pickup. Okay. Everything's just coordinated from the moment your plane lands to the second you hop in the car. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wonder what's going on. It's just smooth and efficient. Seamless. Exactly. And that's what Vulcan does for your computer's graphics. It makes sure all the different parts are working together flawlessly to get those images on your screen. Wow. So with all that said, 
Will Vulcan become the go-to standard for Wayland compositors? Or, you know, will we see it used for more niche applications? Honestly, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? The potential is huge. I mean, it's going to be fascinating to see how developers harness this power to shape the future of computer graphics. Well, there you have it. Keep an eye out because this could be big.